Hey guys, what's up? This is going to be my review of Necrotic Sacrament by Cryptic Rising. Now, I had a little discussion with these guys on uh, email and they were more or less pretty compliant with whatever I wanted to know. I asked them a bunch of questions and they answered them. Uh, so they, the guys were really cool about that. They've also uh, uh, commented on my uh, YouTube channel and so that's cool. Uh, good guys. Now I want to start out by saying um, this is a kind of an experimental ideas sort of project. It's not really, you know, we're gonna try and put as much work in this as we possibly can. It's more of a we're gonna experiment with a lot of ideas and see what comes out of it sort of thing. That's the impression that I get. It is a death metal slash noise album. Now this band consists of two guys, the brothers, uh, both Matt and Zach Plunkett, if I'm saying that right. Matt does the vocals and the noise samples on this album and Zach does the drum tracks and the guitar work. They've kind of switched things up in their current goings. They came out with an album after this in I believe it was June of 2020, so I might review that one as well. Now, uh, what I can say is that uh, Zach now does the uh, vocals and Matt now does the drums. They got a new drum kit. Um, at the end of the EP that they were recording for and so they kind of decided they wanted to take the band in a different a little bit different direction it's going to be more of a death metal type of production rather than a death metal slash noise and so uh, I think one of the reasons they wanted to do that was because they wanted to be able to play this stuff live for people now Zach also produced this thing uh, I think how it went was they just sort of one of them would do the the guitar work and they would send it over and then the other one would do the drums and then they, they would just kind of send it back and forth until they the whole thing was done and they you know mixed and mastered it I think it was uh, yeah mostly Zach that did the production on this thing now this is available on uh, cassette tape and I actually have the cassette tape I don't have it on me right now, but uh, I do have it around here somewhere. As I said, this is really a experimental type of thing. Uh, Matt and Zach have been playing together for quite a long time, like 10 years. They draw from a lot of people in the early 90s, um, some early metal stuff, black metal and death metal type stuff. In the music that they wanted to make, they wanted to reflect a kind of black and white imagery that you see on the um, album cover it's so they wanted to reflect that now another thing that is interesting about these guys is they both love experimental metal so they're not into just the um, mainstream stuff like Metallica but they like to go into the depths of you know uh, what can they find some really obscure thing and listen to it and be like oh yeah that's awesome or whatever they, they like to they're very experimental people and they like to experiment a lot with their palette of music as well as what they produce now the other thing that I should mention is they wanted a kind of industrial feel to this thing and it definitely does have that it definitely gets that right with a lot of the noises that are coming out of the uh, uh, noise samples and just the way that the guitar is playing some licks here and there and uh, just generally uh, does have that industrial feel along with the, the uh, punchy uh, sounding of the, the uh, drums I suppose that goes along with the black and white theme as well now what's interesting here is that the vocals although you can't really make out what the vocals are when you're listening to it you just have no idea what when they're saying what however they do have the lyrics on Bandcamp so you can visit them there and see what they're actually saying. But the, the lyrics largely focus on environmentalism and the human condition. All right, let's get on to the categories, shall we? Now, the rhythm and white of the notes, I wanna say there's something really unique about this. They sort of have a kind of obtuse 
synergy, if you know what I mean by that. Uh, things are, in some respects, off-putting, but at the same time, they put you to ease with the uh, notes. The way the rhythm plays in light of the notes is, is, is very... Um, it, well, if, if you are a sensitive person, it might be disconcerting, I would say. The, the, sort of a haunting sort of feel that, uh, you know, it's hard to get away from the um, unorthodox sort of sounds and the rhythms in white of the notes seems to be. So overall, I'm going to give that a 2 out of 5. I think it's better than average. I think it's pretty good, but uh, it could, could be a little bit better. But measuring based on how good it is, I'd probably put it at a 2. Moving on to the notes in white of the depth. This is their best category. I think they do a phenomenal job here. Uh, really hard to dock them on stuff. Of course, I'm not docking them. I'm measuring how good they are doing. Um, they, they do really, once you spot the notes and what they're doing in terms of the depth of the music that's going on here, I think this is sort of what comes out of an experimental project like this. Uh, it really creates almost what I would call like a heterodoxy of music in, in terms of the uh, notes and white of the depth. There's a, plenty of atmosphere in this thing and it, uh, it has a uh, very... Uh, complex sound I would say so and and the atmosphere is is very striking as well so good category for this one I'm gonna give that a 2.3 out of 2.5 now the depth in terms of the listenability now this is a mixed bag I, w I would say it's got some good things in it it's got some not so good things in it it is uh, sort of in some regards uh, choppy regarding the smoothness of the music Perhaps that's more a category for the uh, listenability in terms of the rhythm. But in terms of the uh, depth and the listenability, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. My biggest concern of the depth in terms of the listenability is that it's just not very listenable until you listen to it about three, four, five, six, ten times. You really have to immerse yourself in it before you start to, okay, here's what's going on in this and to be able to appreciate it. So it's not a listen to it in like pop music, like, oh, I get what's going on right now and I love it. So that's my biggest concern with the depth in terms of the listenability. It airs a little bit in terms of the depth versus the listenability. So that's what I got there. A mixed bag would probably put it at a 1.7 out of 2.5. So that's that. Finally, the listenability in terms of the rhythm. Now this is kind of choppy and I, I, I don't think they, I think in some regard it's meant to be like that because as I said earlier at the beginning, the, the music is supposed to mirror this sort of black and white imagery. So you're going to get that choppiness, that sort of contrast between different things. They do a really good job in some parts of the contrast, but when it comes to the listenability and, and the rhythm, it's just, there's some lacking there. So I'm going to end up giving that a 1 out of 2.5. So overall, that's going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, this is a lower rating than most of the ones that I've rated before. But I, I am coming with this with fresh eyes. The newness is sort of wearing up, worn off. So I'm not going to be giving everything you know, an 8.5, you know, a 9. Usually I've had a group of things that are you know, in between here where this is the top and this is this is the cutoff point and everything is like nothing below a seven. Well, I'm coming at it with fresh eyes now, so I think I'm, I'm, at a, I'm, I'm being more realistic in this. Well guys, thanks, that's my review of Necratic Sacrament by Cryptic Rising. Thanks for watching, talk to you later, bye.